Using the analogy of a bar, I will help you understand what derivatives are and how things can go wrong. Bob owns a bar in Phoenix. His clientele is mostly people who are unemployed and have a drinking problem. It doesn't take long before business begins to slack off as the economic recovery struggles. Soon Bob realizes that his customers can no longer afford to go to Bob's bar. In a marketing epiphany, Bob devises a plan for his customers to run up a tab that they can repay later when the economy recovers. So Bob starts a ledger of open bar tabs. In a way, Bob is loaning money to his customers. It doesn't take long before every deadbeat in Phoenix has heard of the open tab policy at Bob's, and soon Bob's is the busiest bar in Phoenix. Since none of Bob's patrons are actually paying for their drinks, they could care less when Bob increases his prices, which he does every quarter. Bob's suppliers, seeing an increase in volume and being the greedy suckers they are, give Bob generous extensions on his payment for supplies. Well, lo and behold, one day a young investment banker, let's call him Jim, stops by Bob's bar one day and immediately sees that the debts in the ledger constitutes a substantial asset with large future value and offers Bob a line of credit, which Bob accepts since he still has bills to pay. Note, this genius of an investment banker sees no issue with the fact that the outstanding debts, which are the collateral for the line of credit, are owed by drunks that are unemployed. At the headquarters for Jim's bank, there are some investment professionals that see an opportunity to bundle the debts owed by Bob's patrons and create bar bonds and give them a AAA rating which in turn are traded on the global security markets, making the investment guys very rich and Jim's bank even richer. The average investor seizes the opportunity to buy some AAA rated bonds and the value of the bar bonds continues to climb and the top brokerage houses globally are soon selling the hottest assets since sliced bread and toasters. Note, the average investor doesn't know that the bonds are backed by drunks that are unemployed. Bob's suppliers, seeing the opportunity to purchase the bar bonds, do so and put them in their f pension funds. A year or so later, the bar bonds are still climbing in value, and to lower the risk at Jim's bank, a risk manager tells Jim he needs to go and collect some of the money that Bob's patrons owe. Jim contacts Bob. Bob, in turn, begins to contact his clientele, you remember them, the drunks that are unemployed, and tells them they need to pay their tabs. However, since the patrons are still unemployed, they cannot pay their tabs, and Bob is forced into bankruptcy. Bob's bar closes and all his employees are now out of work, most likely drinking at a bar down the road a block or two that offers an open tab. The news that Bob cannot repay the line of credit spreads quickly and the bar bonds drop in value like a rock overnight. Without the inflated value of the bar bond asset, Jim's bank develops liquidity problems and thus cannot offer anyone else a loan, regardless of how good the collateral might be, which basically freezes credit across the community it serves. Bob's suppliers are now faced to write off the bad bar bond debt. Some are forced into bankruptcy, some are taken over by a competitor, who consolidates the operations, closes the local plant and distributorship, putting hundreds of people out of work. But as fate would have it, the federal government steps in, and using billions of taxpayer dollars, saves the bank, saves the brokerage houses, and even finds a way that the executives of these institutions can get a pay raise out of the deal. And that's basically what the Troubled Asset Relief Program, or TARP, was. Different video, cover that at a different time. How will the government recruit the billions of losses? Simple. By raising taxes on the people who are employed, most likely middle class, who have never been to Bob's in their life. And that is derivative trading.